Every leader has a strategy. Executing on that strategy is the challenge. If you want to learn how to effectively achieve what you've set out to accomplish, then this show is for you. Gain keen insights and listen in as leaders share their stories and challenges. Soar Vision Group and the Baldridge Foundation welcome you to Leader Dialogue Radio. Hello, everyone, and happy Friday. Welcome to Leader Dialogue, brought to you by Soar Vision Group and the Baldridge Foundation. I'm Duffy Dixon, and let me introduce you to the founder of Soar Vision Group, Ben Sawyer. He's the chief executive officer. He has more than 30 years of executive leadership experience. Now, Ben launched the Soar Vision Group to help align people with purpose and help them achieve exceptional results, and he's had dramatic results. It's good to see you, Ben, and we've got another great guest with us. Yes, it is Dr. Good to see you, you too, yeah, Dr. Rulin Stacy. Dr. Stacy is managing director of the healthcare strategy business unit at Navigant. He, as a nationally recognized healthcare leader, he brings a future-focused, leadership-driven approach to clients, as well as a unique understanding of provider issues, leadership and the biggie, the governance challenges and strategy alternatives. This is going to be good because that's covering a wide range of responsibilities. Welcome, Dr. Stacy. Well, thanks very much. That intro was so good, it makes me want to listen. <laughs> I hope I've got something good to say. Well, good. We have you for we have you for the whole time. So I'm <laughs> buckle up. <laughs> yeah. So um, for the listeners, I just want to remind, as always, we will be referring to the Leader Dialogue website that we have developed with the Baldridge Foundation, and on there on the homepage you will find an organizational uh, hierarchy of needs that kind of represents a visual Baldrige. So it's a representation of the different things that organizations have to be able to be effective at to, to achieve comparative results uh, in terms of, of best performance. So things like colleague engagement, organizational effectiveness, customer value, uh, strategy, deployment, and execution, that sort of thing. So we, you will hear us reference that. And as you do, that might give you a good kind of home base to go through. So I just echo what Duffy said, Rulon, it's awesome to have you on the radio show and looking forward to this discussion. I'm, I am very pleased to be here, man. Thank you very much for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Let's start off with just a few kind of, you know, get into it questions. Um, describe how you came to first identify and really value the national treasure that is the Baldridge Performance Excellence Framework. Uh, I was a a chief operating officer of one of the hospitals in the SSM system, and Got it. Sister Mary Jean Ryan was uh, one of the early adopters, maybe the earliest adopter, and the whole system became engaged with it, and when I left and went to Colorado to run my own health system, it was so meaningful to me that I, I took it, and one of the interesting things, Ben, there is that I learned that from Sister Mary Jean, and, I, and now I've taught it to different people. If you were at the award ceremony last yeah. year, yeah. the city of Fort Collins said, well, we learned this from Rulin, and I thought that was so interesting that I learned it from Mary Jean. They learned it from me. They're now teaching it to cities around the world. It, it truly mm. is infectious in a good way. Yeah, and it's and it's it's interesting that leaders can pass it on, like you're talking about, and it has such clarity and relevance to other leaders and organizations that's fascinating yeah truly truly it does yeah so another question is when you uh took on the pooter valley um, ceo role uh and were embarking on that could you just describe kind of the challenge challenging operating environment you were leading at the time and uh you know what was influencing your decision to embark on a full baldridge journey there Oh yeah, I would I would be happy to. So I happened to be the fifth CEO in four years. Oh wow! Oh wow! At uh, <laughs> uh, Poudre Valley Health System, and it showed in the culture and the operating performance, and w what what we needed was stability. And I had become so um, familiar with the framework at SSM that. I wanted us to consider the framework, but the framework itself says look at the data and make a decision. And so, right. as a leadership team, I, I said we I want to do something that we can we can focus on, but let's decide. And so, we went through ISO 9000, we went through Baldridge, we went through Shingo, we went through everything we could get our hands on to find a framework. And so, when I say that I think the Baldridge is the the premier framework, 
I do that from some background in, in researching others. And, and we adopted that and uh, drove it through the organization and got people focused on it and, and changed lives. I, I've said in my, my discussions with, uh, as I've spoke on this over the years, that when I look at our mortality rate that we had at Poudre Valley and I see the improvement that we had in the mortality rate, I think, you know, those are people who are alive today. <laughs> That's right. what mortality rate is. Yeah, absolutely. They, those are people who are alive to play today, play and catch with their granddad, you know, things that they would not have been doing had those people in that organization not been committed to that kind of change. And it's what it can do for health care and other organizations. So you said that the, the main challenge when you got there, obviously being, what did you say, the, the fourth CEO in five years? You said it's, other way around, but oh, yeah, five, five fifth and four years. Oh, even even more challenging. Right. You, you said one of the one of the first challenges was stability. How do you create stability when all they've known is instability? I mean that that that's that's a huge task. Yeah, it's uh, um, stability comes from vision, and vision comes um, from access to to leaders from. Um, being transparent in what you do and so for we sat down with the group and said what do we want to be when we grow up what what is our difference I I remember clearly sitting at at one of the first meetings and saying okay well if that's our vision if we really want to provide world-class health care which is what the vision we we decided on and we wanted to get everybody engaged in it. we want every single employee to be riveted on that we figured that that would get people focused on on where they were going and give them the stability that they were looking for. We wanted to be transparent and letting everybody know. And I was talking in a meeting and I said, you know, then if this is true, then we want to compete with the Mayo Clinic, right? We want, and everybody laughed and <laughs> said, wait, <laughs> I'm so not joking. <laughs> and uh, about 10 years later, a crew from the Mayo Clinic signed up for our sharing days and i thought okay there I'm you there. go i've arrived there, yeah. there's your i told you so moment <laughs> right exactly yeah that's fascinating so one of the other things that you mentioned along the way this is a little bit of a tangent question but um you talked about the mortality rate and um you know how big of an impact this can have on a high reliability organization a hro um, and I was, interestingly enough, Rulon, I was having a prep conversation with Craig Clapper from Press Ganey, who is going to be a guest on our show coming up. And we were talking about the very same thing. And he made the comment that um, you can become an HRO if you pursue the Baldridge, but not the other way around necessarily. Because the Baldridge framework is so comprehensive from the standpoint of its key work processes and so forth. I'm just curious as to your thought on that, having, you know, lived the dream. <laughs> I, I, I would second that. And um, the, I'm familiar with, uh, you know, the one that comes to mind right now is my friend Chuck Stokes at Memorial Hermann yeah. in, uh, in Houston. And he is as passionate about high reliability as any human being on earth and the framework that he's used to adopt that is is the Baldrige framework and it's uh, it, it it's a tool that he's used effectively my I've got another friend who's the CEO of mainline health in uh, Philadelphia Jack Lynch and Jack's organization for years has been a world leader perhaps the world leader in safety and, and safety issues and to try and drive that through the rest of the organization, duplicate those successes, create a pattern. They've adopted the Baldrige framework too and it's, it's what good organizations do. Uh, when I talk about mortality, that, that's the one I mentioned, but through the process of Baldrige, we, we measured everything, right? right. It's, it's being able, what Baldrige does is if somebody comes to you and says, are your employees satisfied working here? Do, do, do your employees like working here? You can say yes, but then the next question should always be prove it. Yeah. And, and every employee in our organization, and I think if you're in a good organization, you should have every right to say, or a, a customer, okay, prove it. Right. Okay, our cars are the best, prove it. Right. Our, um, our surgery 
the infection rate is the lowest. Oh, prove it. And if you can't answer that, you're not doing it right. And that's where high reliability comes from. Right. Yeah, that's that's fascinating. And there are a couple themes that just came out of that, which is measure everything and prove it. And also, you had talked about the transparency of leadership that was required because you said stability comes from vision and then you know vision comes from leadership, transparency, and candor. We're going to get to those. Uh, if if not this one, I know you're joining us next week for the radio show. We're going to dig into that stuff. But um, let me ask another uh, question. In today's age of consumerism, how you know? Because the challenge with the age of consumerism, Ruan, obviously, is people want everything now. <laughs> they, they don't want to wait, right? Average life cycles of CEOs in general is around three years, and it's highly competitive. You know, it, in, instead of having just local competitors, now it's literally global because of the internet. So, how can organizations in this context best leverage the Baldridge Performance Excellence Framework to accelerate? short-term gains, which they need, but also create a sustainable competitive advantage through the cultural transformation. I know that's a, so, that, uh, that's a mouthful, sorry, but yeah. No, 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 I, I, I get that. And, and I'll tell you what I, what is, is one of, of the proudest moments of, of the Baldrige criteria that we use. So we were the first organization to receive the highest level of the Colorado State Award, the Peak Award in Colorado. Yeah. And then we received it a second time, and the year we received it the second time was the year we received the national award. And then, um, because we got, we were so involved in the in the criteria then, and it was it was so process driven. The organization was just living it. It's just how we did our business. It's what our business was. And uh, we went through every year reviewing the the market, developing our strategy, analyzing potential partners. And because of that, we found a partner that was right. We worked with University of Colorado Hospital, ended up merging with University of Colorado Hospital, and three years later won the state award while being completely distracted on merging with this other entity. He hadn't even really focused on it, but it's, it's because it's how we did our, our business. It got so ingrained. Right. And an organization today, the, 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 the environment is different, but the process is the same. An organization that wants to be prepared for the future, you get into the cycles that are mandated by the framework, for, particularly from a strategy perspective. Every year you analyze the market. Consumerism is a big darn deal. It is. And uh, right, the, the, the front door in healthcare, I, I can speak more to healthcare than others, but the, the front door in healthcare has gone from, from um, hospitals emergency rooms to doctor's offices to your telephone that's that's how people are getting in and, yeah. and people want it and they want it now and they want access to it and they want response organizations that have been involved in the framework for years have known this for years and they, they're prepared for it today because they were ready they looked at the market they did the things they were supposed to do and now today as the as the front door to your organization becomes digital you're ready because you've prepared through the, the framework. Yeah, no, that makes good sense. So essentially, if an organization is doing this thoughtfully, engaging everyone, so there's kind of a collective mindfulness, right, of of what the organization is trying to accomplish, and everyone's kind of acting like an owner, um, they're able to be more nimble, it sounds like, as it relates to responding to consumerism requirements. Is that? Well, I hope so. I mean, that's, that's part of the theory, but they but the process mandates that. And so yeah. if if you're fully engaged in the process, you're measuring your outcomes, but you're also providing meaningful annual input. And so you guide your entire strategy around the feedback you get from your your Baldrige application or other other reports. You 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 implement that feedback, you gather data from your stakeholders, you get you you go through the process, the board populates that in their um, strategic planning process. And you do that cycle every year, a, a, an effective organ, you get into that cycle, an effective organization, the, the governing board will meet every year at the same time to review their strategic plan. And you'll have the same data that went in and the same process that comes out. And if you do that, if you get into that cycle, then then you, you're researching the, the industry. And in healthcare, you look back and you see what banking went through and 
you think, wow, we can learn from that, then you're prepared today because you know that it's coming. It's here now. I mean, if you're waiting to prepare today in healthcare, you're about five years late. Yeah, that makes sense. So for the listeners, Rulan, um, maybe you can just take a second and describe the seven different categories that are the Baldridge and, and give potentially special attention to those things that permeate all of them. Like you've talked about leadership, you've talked about comparative results across all the categories. Um, do you mind just kind of jumping into that a little bit so that listeners understand sort of the scope of Baldridge and what's included, what what kinds of things organizations should be really cognizant of to be able to be effective? Yeah, I can. Um, the first, uh, I will start with the first and the last. The first is leadership, and leadership includes management and governance and how you you engage all of the the different organizations, at the different leadership functions of your organization, and tie them into what you do. But then. Uh, it's all everything is focused on category seven which is the results if you if you go through all this process and the results aren't better if your mortality rate isn't down or your financial performance isn't pr- proved um, improved then there's no there's no point the the center of that is category four which is knowledge management it's how we exchange all of the information that we get from say category five that's human resources or category six that is um, data exchange uh, customer input and uh, it's the opportunity to share that data and make sure that everybody has the same the same process the same access to the um, to the same data and that you use that in a in an aligned fashion what Baldridge does is it forces you to look at leadership and strategy, human resources, um, knowledge management, all of the different categories, and force yourself to ask, how do they interact with each other, and then how do they drive results? Everything, all of those interact together and then drive results. And an organization simply, nobody is smart enough to do this on their own. You just, you can't do it. And there's different tools you lose, use at, at different times, but an effective governance uh, in category one will know how it impacts with knowledge management in category four or data from from employees in category five or the strategy outlined in category two, and and they all focus in they and you get feedback on every one of those. And, and with healthcare specifically, uh, we are being asked, and, and the, it's a beginning of a presidential cycle, and so we hear a lot about that. In healthcare, we are getting a lot of pressure to simultaneously drive down costs and drive up quality. Right. And that cannot be done by somebody just thinking the right way to do it. It is a process-driven model. And I will tell you today that organizations that are not using the framework, healthcare organizations that are not using the Baldrige framework today are not optimizing their improvement. They are not, because you can't do it without it. And, and there's, there's people when I, they say, well, we're using Magnet, or we're, we're using high reliability, or we're using all of those. And, I, and, and when they say that, it's evidence that you don't understand the framework. Those are great programs. I use them all. But the framework tells you when to use those programs and how. Yeah, I, I, I totally echo that. We have the same conversation because, again, Lean Six Sigma, for example, has been you know widely used up, up to and including the Toyota production system. Uh, from what I've learned over all the years of performance improvement, this the Baldridge is the broadest framework, covers every key work process, uh, and, and you have to sort of look under every rock. Uh, and all those other things that you talked about, Magnet, HRO, Lean Six, whatever, uh, can contribute to it, but in our and potentially are a subset of it, right? They're not. They're good. They're good things, yeah. but but they're not the same. The best analogy that that I've found, and I don't know that there's a perfect analogy, but the best one that I found is golfing, and I just golf, and so to me, Baldridge is the golf bag. And all of the other 
tools are the golf clubs and and um, a good caddy that understands the framework can tell you when you need to pull out Six Sigma and when you need to pull out high reliability and when you need to pull out magnet. But none of them are in themselves the framework. That's a great they're analogy. All, that is a good analogy, particularly. Yeah, I, they're I'm all f- tools at the right time. Yeah, yeah, but yeah. you would never pull out a nine iron on the uh, on the, the tee box because yep. you just know that's not when it's being used. But nine irons are very valuable. Yep. I totally relate to that being a golfer. In fact, uh, I was at Pebble Beach one time playing, and the caddy was telling me on a particular green, this is where you need to hit it at this pace. And it, it was not my read at all. But And you didn't believe it. I didn't believe it, but I followed. But he knows the course better than but you. But I followed his <laughs> I followed his guidance, and sure as shooting, it, it, you know, the ball it didn't go in, but it came up right next to the hole. Mm. If I had followed my instinct, it would have been like, you know, 12 to 15 feet away, easy. Um, so that's a, that's a really interesting point that each of the clubs are basically contributing to the game and a good caddy, i.e. Baldridge advisor and consultant can help with that. But ultimately your, your ability to play the game has to do with your proficiency in using those, right? Because I'm no Tiger Woods or is, you know what I mean? Like it's the proficiency of using them and it's also understanding that it's comprehensive. That's fascinating. And it's also good to say not either or. It's not an either or. It's not Baldridge or this or it's, yeah. Right, right, right. It's not, it's not an either or. It's, why, why is an either or? Sometimes I need a nine iron and sometimes I need a three iron. Yeah. I need them all. Yeah. And, and I just need to know when to use them. And, people it it's that movie i can't remember the name of it now where the guy says well i'm just going to use a seven iron oh but you yeah. can't use the seven iron the whole time and he yeah. said well honestly it never occurred to me to do that <laughs> and then, and yeah right that was I, that kevin, you... kevin kevin Costner. Costner. yeah fun fact right, I kevin had a, Costner. yeah i had a friend yeah, who tried to do that after that movie he did you... he tried to do the course yeah that didn't work <laughs> yeah why would you use a seven iron the whole time when you've got a whole bag yeah. it's just that baldridge is the the caddy and and people who say to you, oh, yeah, no, lean lean is the answer. You know, I use a 7-iron more than any club. I love lean. Lean is, is, a, is a club. It is not the caddy. Yeah. So it's interesting. A couple things uh, that I want to z- zero in on relative to that. First of all, really good golfers, um, the pro level, will walk a course in advance. They will analyze their strategy. They know exactly what they're going to hit when. They may modify it based on conditional changes, but their strategy is super clear, and then they try to execute on their strategy. So that's one thing. And then the other thing that keeps coming out and what you're talking about is there's something different about the leaders that that drive effective transformation they listen to their caddies, <laughs> I mean, basically, right? Whereas often leaders don't listen particularly well because they have the authority and, you know, and they think the full responsibility to make it happen. We often say on the radio show, uh, you have authority in your position, but you share responsibility with the front line. Um, thoughts on that, Rulon, from the standpoint of your experience and, and the impact of strategy development and execution on the effectiveness of the Baldur's journey and then also just some of your thoughts on leadership yeah I, I, I I'm liking this analogy more and more it's not just listening to you talk I, I thought of some things that that I had not thought of before and it does resonate with me and if you're in a tournament you show up and every day they change the pins yep mm-hmm. that's okay I've got the tools in my bag to adjust that and, yep. and I know the course well enough that if the pins change, I can, I'm, I'm happy to go to the back of the green or the front of the green. Yeah. Now, for our for the people listening to this who aren't golfers, we've lost them about 10 minutes ago. <laughs> yeah, but apologize. Yeah. It is, it is, a, it is a, really, though, a good it, – it, if you are into process to performance excellence, if you want to get better at your performance, you have to give yourself every tool. And – if you go to a tournament, they let you have 13 clubs or whatever the number is. There's just no point in going with seven clubs. And even though I use my three iron once around, I've got one. Yeah. And 
I just I, I like and and it you can adjust you know the course you you walk the course you become familiar with it it's a part of the process I I like I'm liking this analogy better and better yeah yeah me too and I've always found it interesting the highest performing golfers will often describe we like they're talking about their team you know when they're playing and and you you listen like well you're the only one that played I mean like what are you talking about you're the one that swung the club or whatever but what they're really meaning is no 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 it was the the trainer that helped me get fit it was the person that's on the driving range it's my caddy sports psychologist sports psychologist whatever Everybody, like, right it, it's it's everybody, and any golfer that thinks it's just them doesn't doesn't win. And that goes into being no. a good leader. You know, the leader who doesn't just sit at the top office, but, like you said, engages in all, at least knows of all the levels going on and makes that connection with the frontline workers. That's transparency. It also takes a leader who has some humility, who's willing to That's say, right. you know, I... Bal yeah. Baldridge is the caddy. I'm not. I mean, that's that's big, and not all leaders will do that. Right. And and what's interesting is sometimes you have to be a servant to be a winner. We'll talk more about that in the next uh, next week radio show, uh, Rulon. We need to wrap some things up here, but uh, there are a few topics that I think um, if you're able to join us next week, uh, we want to be able to go after. Um, probably starting off with this whole thing about the characteristics of servant leadership and how that has to permeate a successful organization that will tie into transparency which we talked a little bit about before um we want to circle back to that measure everything thing uh, that you talked about uh also talk about some of the key determinants for success and then i think if we have time it would be nice to talk about sustainability like what happens in organizations where they're on this boulders journey and then there is a leadership transition you know what happens and why why is it sometimes challenging for organizations to sustain results does that sound good it does sound great so it seems to me that you should either should turn in tune in next week or be there or be square right That's exactly right. <laughs> exactly all right. all right we've all agreed we'll be here yes <laughs> thank you so much rule and i really appreciate you joining us and we want to thank everyone for listening to leader dialogue Brought to you by Soar Vision Group and the Baldridge Foundation. Remember, you can listen to a new live show every Friday at 1 o'clock Eastern Time. You can visit Business Radio X, go to the Gwinnett Studio and select Leader Dialogue, and then you just click the Listen Live button. And you can also, if you can't join us live, you can also go to leaderdialogue.com slash podcast. We have all of our shows there as well. On behalf of CEO Ben Sawyer and the Soar Vision Group and our producers Trey and Mike sitting over there, Guys, wave. I know it's radio, but come on. I'm Duffy Dixon. Join us next time on Leader Dialogue here on Business Radio X.